take a look at today's starting lineups brought to you by Capital One and for Oregon State TVO, Talia Van Alhoffen along with Tamia Gardner. Great compliments to Reagan Beers. Donovan Hart Hunter is a freshman point guard. And these are five of the six likely Notre Dame players you will see. Hannah Hidalgo in the running for National Freshman of the Year, getting ready to take on this Oregon State team. They played each other five times historically. Notre Dame has won all five games and we are underway. And here is Donovan Hunter, number four, the point guard who's been starting for them since the second half of their very first game. Well, this game is going to be all about pace. Notre Dame wants to get out in transition. They want to they want to score off of their defense. And if you're Oregon State, you want to keep this a half-court game and be able to feed Reagan Beers on the interior. The difference in the pace of both teams is marked. Sonia Citron with some good defense, but the offensive rebound Taken down, the ball goes over to Notre Dame. Niel Ivey, the Notre Dame alum, who won a national championship as a player and as an assistant coach. Boy, Scott Ruick, five-time now Pac-12 Coach of the Year, taking his team back to the NCAA tournament. They have not been here since 2021. And last year, no postseason as, at all. Only 13 wins, four of which came in the Pac-12. That's Joe Vasili, who is uh, leading up our crew this afternoon, our officiating crew. 32 seconds in, we have a stoppage. We assume it's clock related, but uh, both teams now have been sent to their respective benches. Neil Ivey and Scott Ruick getting a free timeout, and we will let you know what's going on as soon as we know. We are looking at the shot clock. The shot clock, tenths of a second need to come on at five, under five, not at ten. Attention to detail by this officiating crew. And, and, and we saw Joe Vasili before the game, and I asked him, and I guess I should have asked you, is that the first goaltending you've ever called yes, last weekend? Yeah, we, we had one. Connecticut, yeah. Our Jackson State player. Got a ball off the backboard on a layup attempt. The first one I've called, and I've been doing this since way back in the last century. You know, it was interesting listening to Joe because, you know, as, as, as coaches, as broadcasters, as players, you process all of this stuff. And Joe was like, yes, I found out. He said, I was behind the play, and all of a sudden I, I said, I think she just goaltended. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A bit of a shock to the system for all of us. All right, 32 seconds in, we're going to take a timeout as they fix the clock. Welcome back to Albany. Joe Vasili with his eagle eye. Notice that the shot clock was showing tenths of a second after it went under 10 seconds, but it should only come on after five seconds are left. And it really doesn't mean anything other than it can just be a distraction, whether it's for the players, for officials for the fans for us you know for whomever yes so that has been corrected and now let's start sweet 16 matchup oregon state taking on notre dame hannah hidalgo the dynamic freshman the newcomer of the year in the league gets it over to citron who missed matt marshall couldn't get to the ball but sonia citron who never stops moving picked it up Hidalgo, who could be a matchup nightmare for Oregon State, gets her first basket. Hannah Hidalgo is one of the toughest players in the country to just keep in front of you one-on-one. -on -one. She's going to get easy, not maybe not easy opportunities, but she's going to get a lot of opportunities to get to the rim, and then her decision-making at the rim is going to be critical. And see how Oregon State continues to attack on the offensive end. Mia Gardner gets the basket. Just a sophomore out of Eden, Utah. Marshall with the miss. Marshall in the starting lineup when Kylie Watson went out with an ACL injury during the ACC tournament. Notre Dame has no depth in the post. Something Beers might be able to take advantage of. Beers comes down with it, kept her dribble alive. And was able to rescue Van Olhoffen. 
And this is the pace, yes. right? This is perfect for the Beavers. And, and, and this is the challenge with Reagan Beers on the interior, is being able to not just check her one-on-one, -on -one, but being able to keep her off of the offensive glass. Hunter with the miss, Beers with the box out, and they call Maddie Westbelt for the foul, trying to get to the rebound. So back-to-back -back offensive rebounds for Reagan Beers. And you think about the difference in a matchup with Kylie Watson, who can probably match her physicality a little bit better than Nat Marshall on the interior. Foul trouble is the biggest enemy right now for the Irish. Going inside, Hidalgo came over to help out. Kicked out, good look on the outside, rebound. Citron had it taken away by Donovan. Well, we saw Notre Dame yesterday in practice, really working on that help on the interior. Forces rotation on the backside, and rebounding out of that rotation is really tough. Citron induced TVO. So we have Van Olhoffen into the travel. Van Olhoffen doing a great job, career high in assists this year. Marshall, they're going to leave her alone, and she will not shoot from out there. She's only taken one three all year and missed it. Hidalgo, nope, Beers, able to quickly get it over to Donovan Hunter. Puts a lot of pressure on your offense if you're Notre Dame, if you're only getting one shot opportunity. Beers in a high post. And O'Hawton. Able to get around Beers, running the pick and roll, gets it up and in and drew the foul. Bam, she's got such good hands. I mean, this is not an easy catch and gather in this two-man game. And Van Olhoffen does a great job of putting it on the money, but having to gather that, stay on balance, finish through contact. I mean, excellent execution. And oftentimes, when you look at a player like Reagan Beers, you know, you, you can take for granted because she makes it look so easy, but she's got great feet. She's got great hands, and she's got great instincts and understanding. And head coach Scott Ruick says that Reagan has the best timing and feet that he has ever seen as a head coach. Beers at 6'4", told us, I'm 6'3", maybe. 6'4", <laughs> maybe, with some chunky shoes on. But whatever height she is, she is a potent weapon. Nice turnaround, ticks off. Hidalgo gets the rebound. That last Notre Dame foul, by the way, on Anna DeWolf. That transfer from Fordham. Westbelt in traffic, hits it. Westbelt's two-time second team All-ACC performer for the Irish. Inside Beers. Notre Dame with a good defense. And then inside, somehow that pass made it way into Beers and was taken away by Westbelt. DeWolf on the run, up and in. That's exactly what the Irish want. Terrific execution on the defensive end in scramble mode, but you've got to secure the defensive board if you want to get out in transition. That was a picture perfect defensive possession. Notre Dame feasting on getting out in transition all season long. Gardner, sweet. To me, a Gardner is such a matchup nightmare because of her versatility, her size, her ability to stretch from three. There she just finds the soft spot in the zone. Notre Dame going on this make miss. Zone on a make, man on a miss. Westbell from three. Really brought her numbers up during the 10 game win streak. Hidalgo, who leads the nation in steals, unable to take that away, and another foul, that's two on DeWolf. As we hit our first substitution for Notre Dame, the two fouls sending DeWolf to the bench, and that brings in KK Bransford, sophomore from Cincinnati. And KK Bransford can give you a little bit more size on some of those rotations defensively. about three inches taller than DeWolf. Looking inside for Beers. Shot clock into single digits. Citron, blanketing Van Olhoffen. Good mistake, good job to get back. Westbelt, 
guarded out there by Gardner. Now, you have two freshman point guards in Hunter and Hidalgo. Boy, Hannah, right to the bucket. And Pam, that's her growth right there. She got a couple of mid-range pull-ups. That time she's checking the D. Where are they? She doesn't over-penetrate into the defender, uses the glass. We didn't see that in the non-conference. We didn't see that early in conference play. That's been her understanding and development. Another offensive rebound for Oregon State. Gardner's found a little spot over there. She's got six of their eight points. It's just a great job, and Scott Ruick talked about it. We've seen zone from Oregon all season long in, in the Pac-12. We're, we're used to it, we're ready for it. And Tamia Gardner's finding her spots. Ransford bottled up in the lane. Westbell left it into the bottom of the net. This is a solid Oregon State defense. They're not going to wow you with creating turnovers and necessarily lead the scores, but individual defense, making sure that they get you to take tough shots. Maddie Westbell moving around the floor for the Irish on offense is going to be key. Westbell comes up with the steal. Citron pulls it and got hit. So a foul as we head to our first break. Notre Dame up two. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Try and decide. Hidalgo has shown to be one of the most electric players in the country this year, and she is just a freshman. But it didn't take long for her to get involved in this game. Four early points, and she burst out of the scene. This is in Paris to start the season against South Carolina, the number one team in the country, and she was fearless. She showed her coach, Neil Ivey, right out of the gate that she was built for the big stage. When the lights are brightest, she has been at her best. And even though her team did not get that win, she put her name and the country on notice that she is her. 157 steals this season is a D1 freshman record. 780 points, another ACC freshman scoring record. She is your dicks need to know because she's got next, she's got now. And Hannah Hidalgo, one of the most electric players in the country. Thank you, Holly. Today's need to know indeed brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. And at 31 points in the loss in Paris to South Carolina was the most by any Notre Dame player ever in their first game. She, she came on with a bang, certainly onto the, onto the scene, even though they were handled easily by South Carolina. And Hidalgo's uh, Don Staley, and if Notre Dame wins this game and South Carolina wins Indiana, we, uh, beats Indiana, pardon me, in the second part of our doubleheader, we will have a South Carolina-Notre Dame rematch in the regional final. And I think Notre Dame would like to have that rematch, certainly. But Hannah Hidalgo is a player who, she's had a lot on her shoulders this year. She's been thrown into the fire. If this is a team that's had to reinvent themselves multiple times because of injuries, and she has stepped up to every challenge all season long. Maybe miles out all year. There's Beers, quickly gets double, was able to just gather herself and put it in. Beers now with four points and five rebounds. And that was a perfect pass, right on the money. And Reagan Beers had to catch between two and finish. If you're Notre Dame, you got to put a little bit more pressure on the passer, make that pass a little bit more difficult. Notre Dame needs to hit from the outside, but Bransford just hit air. I mean, this pass is just on the money. And Scott Ruick talking about Tamia Gardner just compliments Reagan Beers perfectly, not just because of her scoring ability, but because of her ability to do that. Beers leads the nation in field goal percentage, and she's showing you that she just doesn't miss. And she doesn't work early. Her timing is impeccable on that over-the-top pass. She doesn't release her seal too early. She holds it just perfectly. And how about the passes right on the money? Dago can't hit another rebound. It's time for Gardner, who brings the ball up for Oregon State. And Oregon State's going to live with that pull-up. Pull-up off of the two-man. They're going to sit Reagan Beers in that drop coverage. They're going to force Notre Dame to consistently knock that shot down. Notre Dame could use this young woman, Kylie Watson, who had been starting and for her ACL in the ACC tournament. So it's Nat Marshall 
all day, all the time, and Beers hits again. Four straight possessions, four straight touches, four straight scores. They're going to continue to give her looks on the interior. And if you're the Irish, you've got to find a way to make those passes a little bit more difficult. Beers is at the last six points. That's a foul. Porova trying to get to Citron. I mean, this is just too easy. The ball gets inside. She's got a foot in the paint. You're not going to stop that. She leads the nation in field goal percentage, not just because of her ability to finish, but because of how she does her work and gets the position necessary to lead to an easy look. Citron still looking for her first field goal. Another rebound for Gardner. Hidalgo has four points so far in this game. So looking for her first steal, she leads the nation in that category, four and a half plus per game. TVO stopped by Citron. Lefty shot buried from the outside by Lily Hansford who is the best three-point shooter percentage-wise in the Pac-12. Oregon State is always a team that has had nearly perfect spacing. And when you're in scramble mode, they make the right play. Westbell got a friendly bounce or two, and that breaks a 9-0 Oregon State run. Shot clock is off now for the Beavers. Westbelt on defense and a double dribble called on Gardner so the Irish will have a chance to take the last shot of the quarter. But Beers is going to get some extra rest as he is taken out. Kelsey Reese, number 53, checking in for Beers. Here's Westbell, elevates. Missed everything in Oregon State. Well, they wanted a foul on Hidalgo. And Joe Vasili put his arm up. Yep, he has just called a foul on Hidalgo, which came in the last second of the quarter. Call on the floor is a foul on number three. We're checking the clock to see the time. And this is one of those, I would say, say youth, youth inexperience right here. Being smart, if you're Hannah Hidalgo, there's nowhere that Oregon State can go. They've got to check it up from half court, if, even if they get by you. Just play good position defense, because we've talked about it already. The Irish can't afford to get into foul trouble. And Hidalgo, certainly the head of the snake on this team, both offensively and defensively. But I think I mean, it, it, this shouldn't take long because it, it clearly appeared before time had expired. Oregon State out rebounding Notre Dame big. 12 to 4 in this game. The Coming up, Holly Rowe will have an interview with Scott Ruick, who did such a terrific job this season with Oregon State. The game clock will re be reset to 0 0.8. Eight tenths of a second left when Hidalgo committed the foul. Just the first one on Hannah, but boy, as you said, Steph, you have to avoid that at all costs, particularly in that part of the floor with no time left. Yeah, there was no advantage to be gained by closing the space and putting yourself in that position. So after one, Reagan Beers and Oregon State leading by two. Beers leading the country in field goal percentage, off to a great start, scoring and on the boards. 
Next up, we are proud to recognize Dove, who is partnering with ESPN to level up women's sports. Here's a look at Oregon State's Fueling the Run, brought to you by Wendy's. It's been a great season for them with 26 wins so far. They beat Eastern Washington in the first round and then survived a very tough test against Nebraska for all the celebration at Gill Coliseum. Holly Rowe had a chance to catch up with Scott Ruick. Well, Coach Ruick, coming out of your last time out, it seemed like you really made an intentional effort to get the ball to Reagan Beers. Three straight baskets. What was the message in that moment? Well, I just think to settle down was the main message. Just, you know, I mean, this is a fun atmosphere. You know, obviously we're playing against a great team. And so just to settle down and execute. They were switching defenses. I thought we just, it took us a little while to get accustomed to it. And then we settled in and saw the floor much better. Going inside to her draws that double team. How's that opening things up for your shooters like Langsford outside? Well, you know, that's what we've been seeing all year long. I mean, Ray demands to most of the time. And so because of that, our spacing is very important. And it emphasizes her ability to see the floor and pass so well. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much, Holly. Pam Ward along with Stephanie White and Holly Rowe. This is the first of two games that will be coming your way from Albany. In the Sweet 16, Oregon State leading Notre Dame by two after one quarter of play. And Oregon State shooting 50% from the floor. And Ann Marquez is the veteran trainer. We've seen a lot already in this game, Steph. <laughs> We've had a shot clock issue. And now Hannah Hidalgo's nose ring is being taken out before they are going to let her back on the court, Holly. So, you know, there is a no jewelry rule. She had just a little tiny diamond stud in her nose, but she's been informed that she has to take it out, so they're working to get that out right now. All right, thank you, Holly. They were going to get her back onto the floor as soon as possible. Hidalgo committing that foul in literally the last second of the first quarter. So the Wolf over to Citron. Yeah, spacing just not great right now for Notre Dame. Reagan Beers is able to just sit there in the paint. Westbelt left it short. Marshall rescued it to Wolf. Fires up the three, and Bransford couldn't save it. And this Oregon State defense, you referenced it earlier, just how good they are. Eighth in the nation in field goal percentage defense, best in the Pac-12. 11 Pac-12 opponents were held under their scoring average. That's what this team does. I mean, that, that is what Scott Ruick has been known for. This is a team that makes everything difficult. Again, one of the best defensive teams in the country. I, I, I mean, what they do is they're not going to get out and, and turn, your over, turn your over and get in passing lanes, but they're going to play terrific team defense. And you see holding opponents under their average 29 times. And fam, you know, Utah is one of the most explosive offensive teams you know, in the country. The first time they matched up held Utah 36 points under their average. So it's a team that challenges you to make tough shots. And that's exactly what Citron tried to do. And just to repeat that, they held Utah 36 points under the rack. And 14 the next time they played them. Well, and the Pac-12 with some prolific offenses, but Oregon State has been kind of a staple for Scott Ruick. Bounce pass was a little too chancy. The two things I think about when I think about Scott Ruick's teams, obviously the defense and the spacing. His teams have nearly perfect spacing all the time on offense. And Matty Westbelt continues to go to work. And if I'm Notre Dame right now, I'm, I'm trying to find ways to move her around on the floor and play through her. This is just a great job of recognizing the mismatch, attacking Reagan Beers off the bounce, the splitting defenders, and that's a tough finish. Westbelt has started every game of her career that she has played in at Notre Dame. Barova, the freshman from the from Czech Republic, gets her first basket. And Maddie Westbelt just got her second foul, so she's got to be careful on the defensive end of the floor. Westbelt with two, the Wolf with two. Hidalgo still trying to get the nose ring out over on the bench. Yeah, it's 
and Hannah Doggo, I believe, has been playing with that with tape over it all season long. So I'm sure it's tough to get it out. It looks like she's been in some pain over there as well. Here's working on Marshall. And we spoke with Reagan yesterday, and she says she's just as comfortable using her left hand as her right, which is lethal. Yeah, I mean, she's just so skilled. She's so skilled. She has great instincts, understanding of the game, understanding of position. Well, she uses her feet so well, and, and you can see just creating a little bit of space to get around Nat Marshall, and even utilizing the off arm to protect from Nat Marshall's length. Hunter just picked up her first foul for the Beavers. There's a almost giveaway. DeWolf able to recover, but then Parova blocked it. Multiple levels of effort. Parova, deflection, recovers, block. Outside shot. Here's Bransford. And then deflected away by Hunter to slow down the break. Citron, cool as they come. Just picked it up and buried it. And Sonia Citron has to find a way to get going. I mean, she has been outstanding the last five games, averaging over 25 points, shooting at 50% from the floor. It took her a little while after coming back from her injury that she had earlier in the season to get comfortable again. She said, I've just started to feel comfortable over the last couple of weeks, and you can tell it. Here she comes, Citron. Scoring the last five points for the Irish. Hurt her knee earlier in the year, missed nine games. Wore a brace, then a sleeve, and lately nothing at all on that knee. And yeah, she said it's just been really the last couple of weeks she has felt like herself, and her plays certainly reflected that. Hunter on to Wolf. A true freshman from Medford, Oregon. Best assist to turnover ratio in the lead. Beers comes up with another rebound. And then Parova off glass. Oregon State showing, showing off some of their depth. Timeout with Oregon State up three. Thank you very much. And we are back here, and Hannah Hidalgo is back on the floor, and they talked about the rebounding. We expected that Oregon State would have the edge, but that's a decided edge, and part of it is because Reagan Beers is virtually unstoppable when she gets the ball in the paint. Yeah, there's not a lot of defensive boards to be had for the Irish with Oregon State shooting at 57% from the floor. Uh, but the Irish have done a much better job of when there are those opportunities of securing it. You know, I, the, the biggest thing, the biggest question mark is, is, is how are you going to make life more, a little bit difficult for Reagan Beers on the interior? She's getting too easy a position. Passing is, is really easy. There's not enough ball pressure. Now, Hannah Hidalgo was not on the floor for part of that. So getting Hannah Hidalgo back on the floor, the ball pressure that she can present could be part of the solution. Hidalgo missed the first four minutes and 10 seconds-ish of the second quarter because they were removing a diamond chip that she has been wearing in her nose all year and, and a, last weekend and la including <laughs> last weekend in the NCAA tournament in South Bend had a bandage over it but the officials wanted her to take it out and the doggo comes right to the cup and the ball stays with Notre Dame seconds to shoot for the Irish. Citron heads left. Difficult shot off the glass. Beer's able to slip in there to get another rebound. Well on her way to yet another double-double. She has 15 of them this year. But Pam, that, that's just an example of the good position defense that Oregon State plays. All right, they're not going to block the shot. They're probably not going to get a steal, but they're going to make you take, take tough twos. Beer's Took steps. Matt Marshall doing the defending. Bransford comes back in. Marshall subs out. So this is a smaller lineup now for, for the Irish. And Maddie Westbelt's going to have to check Reagan Beers on the interior. She's got two fouls, so that's something to keep an eye on. Very much so. There's Westbelt giving it up to DeWolf. Comes around the screen. In and out. Beers with another rebound. 
Not getting any second chance opportunities for the Irish. Again, it puts so much pressure on your offense to be able to make every shot. It's a possession ball game, and Oregon State has the pace where they want it. Another turnover, the ninth for the Beavers. Notre Dame has only given it away once. Hidalgo draws a foul. That is among the many things she does well. Yep. She draws fouls really well. Fifth in the nation in free throw attempts. There's a pretty good ball player right there. Camila Cardoza and the number one and unbeaten South Carolina Gamecocks will be taking on Indiana in the second game of our doubleheader. Hunter just picked up her second personal foul. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. The Brilliant Trelawney Show back for the third year. Our great producer, Seth Miller, in charge of that again. Those two are always fun to watch. So if it's Sue and it stinks, find them on Twitter, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if it's great, find them on Twitter. <laughs> Oh, we know it's going to be great. A lot of fun. Very entertaining show. Final four in Cleveland next weekend. One point ball game here in the Sweet 16 matchup. Inside, yeah. Beers hits the yeah. deck. Oh my, that's three on Westbelt. Major trouble for the Irish. You mentioned she would have to have Beers with Marshall on the bench, and she fouled her. I mean, she's trying her, her best right here to body, but Reagan Beers just does a great job of getting position, and it's, it's, it's a clear foul. Uh, but, but that's the challenge. It's a challenge when you lack depth on the interior, as, as, as Notre Dame does with the, their injuries. and It's a challenge when you're in foul trouble, no doubt about it. Marat stepped on the end line. One thing that Oregon State has not done a good job of is holding on to the basketball in this game. Notre Dame has 10 of their 24 points off their 10 turnovers. Let's build on the bench. Marshall back in. And I like this look for the Irish, getting Hannah Hidal with the ball. She's not initiating offense. She's catching it, playing off the ball a little bit. But the decision-making in the two-man, again, Oregon State going to challenge Notre Dame to continue to hit those pull-ups. You know, a lot of these teams have missed its last five shots. They've gone almost three minutes without a field goal, but Oregon State hasn't scored in about two and a half minutes. Olova. She took steps. Now, it's cold in here. One assumes the ice is down because the hockey team plays here, and sometimes it looks like Oregon State's playing on ice. They've, they've been sliding a bit. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with yeah, that. Missing yeah, missing some skates. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I got uh, it. I, it took a it while, good. but that was yeah. a long walk. <laughs> Citron, she's so crafty. Yeah. And, and I think she's going to be really good in that. I, I, I like utilizing her, her pull-up. She's so smooth. Again, Pam, it, it took her some time. You know, once she came back from injury, about 17 games, to really start to, to play like the confident player we're used to seeing, particularly on the offensive end of the floor. She is an elite player. Another three, good box out by Bransford. Here's Hidalgo. One of the few times they've had the ball in the open court. The Wolf for three, hit it! Anna DeWolf, one of two players from the state of Maine we'll be seeing today. Mackenzie Holmes with Indiana in the next game gives the Irish a four-point lead. When you can force contested shots, and you can get the defensive board, it allows the Irish to do what they do best, right? Here's Sonia Citron. That's a crowded area, and she's able to calmly and coolly knock it down. But in transition, Hannah Hidalgo finds Anna DeWolf on the perimeter to knock down a three. It's all about pace, and it's been a little bit of a run, right? You've seen Notre Dame start to find some pace at times, and then Oregon State slows it down, forces half-court execution. So which team can really take advantage of each possession is going to be critical. Anna DeWolf has been on fire since the ACC tournament. She's hit nine of her 14 threes, well over 60%. And that caps a 7-0 run for the Irish. Miel Ivy has done a terrific job with this team this year. 10-game winning streak, but she knew this would be a toughie against Oregon State. I always love it when you say toughie. 
It's a toughie. <laughs> Two and a half minutes left to go. TVO's been rather quiet, but that's a good decision always. Yeah, that, that high low. And again, I go back to ball pressure. Hannah Hidalgo is, is the only player right now who's putting a lot of pressure on the ball in terms of in, in passing into the post. Marshall got a good look, but left it short. It's a tall task to ask anyone to check Reagan Beers one-on-one. -on -one. So you really got to do a good job of trying to force the Beavers to catch it well beyond the three-point line, be disruptive there, and then once they do catch it, being all in their face. Hidalgo comes over to help. The Wolf, Citron, beautifully executed on the break. Citron into double figures now. Had a double-double in their second round win against Ole Miss. Beers kicking it out. Hansford, smooth. Sophomore from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Megan Beers just has such a great feel. She knows the double's coming. She understands where her teammates are going to be. They make themselves available. Citron. Short as Van Olhofen comes up holding her face. Nothing called by the officials. One minute to go in the half. Hunter to Gardner, hit it from three. Scott Ruick talks about her just being a complete player. Her area of growth this season had to be on the defensive end of the floor. It was. But this is an example of what she's always been really good at on the offensive end of the floor. The previous play is under review from the Notre Dame offensive side. So another stoppage in play and another review. It's Van Olhofen over to get a towel on the bench. Yeah, you can see as Sonia Citron was trying to, to get space. Looks like she came right across Van Olhofen, but but I don't I don't see she's with inside of her body. She's almost even in the position where she's on her heels. So I'm not I'm not sure if that's an upgradable foul right there. Carter on the nose trying to make that little swim move to get around. There's no extension. Her elbows weren't out. The defender was, was in her space, no doubt about it. But I, I think that's a basketball play. Jason Liu, the veteran athletic trainer, taking a look at TVO. Official's going to chat about it before they let us know. Had six ties, seven lead changes in this game. Let's listen to Joe Vasili. There is no penalty on the previous play. The ball will be inbounded to Notre Dame on the sideline. Let's bring in our rules analyst, Lisa Mattingly. What do you think of that call? I think we could have had uh, an offensive foul on this play, but since this was an unobserved uh, and they went to the monitor at the appropriate time, we could only then come away with an intentional or disqualifying foul. And I agree with Stephanie. I believe this is not an upgradable play. It's unanimous then because... I don't know how often Lisa would have agreed with me, though. Yeah, right? The so first time you've I'm, ever I'm, I'm heard that, right? I'm going to chalk that one up. Yes. Lisa Mattingly, the no, I, I, Fame official yes, who officiated is absolutely the games that, that you played in and coach, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe playing? That was a long time ago. You're so. a puppy. <laughs> so we're going to stay with a one-point lead in the basketball. Beer is trying to get position against Marshall. And he's done a really good job. Shot clock winding down. TVO off the back rim. And Hannah Hidalgo slows down with about six seconds left now on the clock. Now she's going to back up, hoist the three to end the first half. And what a first half it was. Oregon State takes the soonest of leads into the locker room.
hitting five of their last seven shots in the Sweet 16. Reagan Beer's off to a great start. Here she is with Holly. Well, it took a little bit of time for your team to settle down. When did you start to feel like they started to find you in the post? Uh, we started off strong like that. I feel like getting to the X was super important in this game, obviously. My gosh, I've been doing a great job of finding me, ball faking inside, getting it out. We're going to keep doing that. Possessions matter in March. How can you guys be a little stronger? The turnovers have hurt. Yeah, that's on me. I got to cut back on my turnovers. As a team, we got to do better, but that's on me. That starts with me down there. Um, but just seeing where the defense is at all times is super important. We're going to do that this second half. Sounds perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Reagan Beer is one of the reasons why Oregon shot a blistering 58% in the first half. Let's go to the studio now for the Dove Halftime Report. Very much in this game. The winner gets the winner of our second game this afternoon from Albany. That is unbeaten, number one, South Carolina, when they take on Indiana. More games tomorrow, including Iowa and Caitlin Clark. There's been some activity in Albany surrounding. A little bit, right? A little bit. They will be taking on Colorado. Beers. I just don't think you can, you can check Reagan Beers one-on-one -on -one down there. I, I think that it has to be much more difficult. There is an offensive foul as we go over to Holly. Well, it is no surprise that in the first half, Sonia Citron and Maddie Westfeld, Maddie Westfeld carried this Notre Dame team. Actually, a few weeks ago, they had a meeting with each other, and they vowed that they would hold each other accountable. They had to be more aggressive and carry a bigger load on this team, and they said, we're going to yell at each other, talk to each other. If they're not doing well in a game or in the half, they hold each other accountable, and in that first half, they led the way with 20 points. That's a personal promise they've made to each other, and it's paying off. And they certainly have needed to come up big. Two of the big three on this team. Along with Hidalgo, nice work. And Olhoff, and that is her first points of the game. She was 0 for 3 in the first half, averaging 11 points per game. Beers gets another rebound. Well, you mentioned it, Pam. It's going to take all of the big three. And right now, Hannah Hidalgo is struggling from the floor. She's 2 for 9. Oregon State going to continue to give her that mid-range pull-up. She's got to knock a couple of those down. And she's not been able to get any of those steals that we're used to seeing and then going the other way. There's a freshman point guard for Oregon State, Hunter. Largest lead of the game. It's a 12-0 run extending back to the second quarter. Marshall left open. She won't shoot from there. Citron will. You know, the other thing that you can do if you're Neil Ivey with, with Matt Marshall not being guarded at all by Reagan Beers is in, instead of using her an on-ball screen, you can use her an off-ball screen because now if you get good contact on a screen, Notre Dame's going to have a lot of space to be able to get a shot off. Gardner able to get inside. She is in double figures for Oregon State. Westfield playing with three personal fouls, hands it off to Marshall, who shoots from the free throw line. Rebound number nine for Beers. And again, the Beavers going to slow down the pace. They are not in a hurry. They don't want to get in a running game with Notre Dame. Shot clock into single digits. Gardner with the move around Westbelt, who has to be careful with the foul trouble. And the Beavers are rolling. The lead is 10. Coming out of the locker room. Picture perfect execution by the Beavers. Moving their team around. Getting Van Olhoffen going was critical. She gets the first bucket. And how about the big time three by Hunter and then Tamia Gardner, she was from the outside early in the ball game, now she's scoring it in the paint. Now it's time for Get More, brought to you by Geico. Well, Oregon State came out of the locker room and imposed their will early. Right here, the interior presence of Reagan Beers. They show you they've got guards that can get to the rim. Talia Van Olhoffen gets two. And then you try to rotate to her, and she finds her open teammate, Donovan Hunter, knocks down the three. Tamia Gardner got herself going from the perimeter in the first half, and in the second half, she shows you, I can score my back to the bucket, too, and look at the reaction. This is a team in the Oregon State Beavers that has got a chip on their shoulder, and they want to come out and prove that they belong. 
Yeah. This is a team that has doubled its wins from last season. There you see the run extending back into the second quarter. They are shooting for the game 63%. Reagan Beers has been, ad, as advertised, one rebound away from a double-double. Well, Stephanie, that back-to-the-basket scoring has come from a really great mentor. Tamia Garden has been coached from a very young age by one of the all-time greats in our game, Natalie Williams. Natalie was an All-American at UCLA, WNBA for the Utah Stars, and, of course, an Olympian. She is one of the best post players that has ever lived, and she's been coaching Tamia Gardner since she was very young. And as soon as we get a dead ball, we're going to show you these great pictures. Tamia Gardner is 13 years old in these pictures. Here's Natalie Williams pouring back into the next generation. And I just love this story. She was one of the best to ever do it. She's showing the next generation how to be great. And Tamia Gardner has taken all of that advice from Ogden, Utah, and she is showing up on a big stage today. And I remember when Tamia was a 7th or 8th grader, Natalie Williams calling me and saying, hey, I've got this player that's got a chance to be really really special and, and Tamia Gardner number six overall recruit in that 2022 class and boy has she ever turned out to be really really special. She is tremendous the sixth player of the year in the Pac-12 this year had to be shut down early last year dealing with some medical issues and has come back with a vengeance this season and and Adler Williams one of the all-time yes. greats in in basketball also was a tremendous volleyball player. Citron got it stuffed a couple of times but the ball stays with the Irish. Well, this is just a great job. Again, this team defense collapsing. Looks like a couple of different players got a hand on that ball. Irish are fortunate to be able to retain possession. Megan Beers playing with the mask. Broke her nose against UCLA with the Kiki Rice elbow. But UCLA is here in town too. They will be playing tomorrow in Albany. Looking forward to that. We, we got a, quite a few Pac-12 teams in the Sweet 16, right? I mean, you think about this league of the Pac-12 and how good they've been all season long, how good they've been in the postseason. And of course, it's sad to see that the Pac-12 is going to be no longer. I asked Scott Ruick about it. And, he said, you know, I'm just really grateful. I grew up watching the Pac-12, and to be able to experience it at this level um, has, been, has been a lot of fun. Sweet 16 round of the NCAA Women's Tournament continues today here on ESPN. We'll have Indiana, South Carolina, and later on in the same bracket, NC State, Stanford, and then Gonzaga and Texas. That will be out in Portland, Oregon. All games on the ESPN app. Beers couldn't hit. Now here's the doggo in the open floor. DeWolf nails the three. Notre Dame trying to chip back in this, and we've seen the Irish be resilient all season long. Yeah, it's not going to be any different now. I mean, this is a team who, again, has reinvented themselves multiple times with multiple season-ending injuries, and they've got that fight-and-dog mentality. And a defensive foul right there on Nat Marshall. Hunter stopping a 7-0 Irish run. Look at this take by Hunter. Great job taking the contact, getting it up high enough to be able to use the glass. That is a tough finish by Donovan Hunter. And Pam, this is a young Oregon State team. When you think about a freshman point guard, Talia Van Olhoffen is, is, is experienced, but Tamia Gardner, Reagan Beers, both sophomores. It's a team that felt the sting last year of not being in the NCAA tournament and vowed to not be in that position again. They all stayed. They all worked together during the offseason. Madaga with the miss. Beers has a double-double today. It's a scary thing, as you mentioned. Oregon State, if everybody comes back next year, look out. Oregon State and Washington State, the only two teams not defecting from the Pac-12. Drive in the hoop. Adley Blacklock. Sophomore from Lubbock, Texas. And that's the shot right there, the off-ball screening action. They're gonna get that all day long. That, that's the one, because now you've got Reagan Beers not defending Nat Marshall anywhere on the floor. That curl, that's gonna be there. Westbelt made the shot to cut the lead back to six. In 
inside. Westbelt has to be careful. The ball got away from Gardner. Hidalgo catches, challenges Beard, and got blocked. Hannah oh, Hidalgo at 5'6", going right at Reagan Beers. Hey, this is one of those learning moments, learning on the fly. Next time, go to the other side. Reagan Beers is like, don't bring that in here. What a play by Reagan Beers. Well, in that timeout, Hannah Hidalgo showing some frustration in the huddle. You're going to see her right here. Okay, to keep an eye on her. Very, very frustrated. It struggled from the floor. Two for 11. Hasn't quite been able to get into a rhythm here today. I mean, she does have six points and two assists. But we talked about for Notre Dame, it's the big three. And they need all three of them in order to continue their march in this postseason. Westfeld and Citron doing their part. Well, figures scoring wise, Citron got fouled on the way to the basket, but Hidalgo also was a victim of a monster block by Reagan Beers right before we saw that frustration on the sidelines. Neil Ivey was great in the huddle, though. She looked at Hannah, she's like, we're good, we're good. And then just before they took the floor, really fiery words for her to get out there, get past it, and keep playing hard. These two are both fiery. They play off of each other well, and Niel wants her young point guard to have some good confidence right now. And it's one of those just learning curves. I mean, Hannah Hidalgo has not been here before. You know, she, she's not been in, in this environment, you know, having this experience. You know, she's struggling a little bit from the floor. She missed almost five minutes of game action with him tugging on her nose, trying to take out that nose ring. The welcome to the Sweet 16 moment right there by, by Reagan Beers. But what Hannah Hidalgo has done all throughout the, the course of this season is learn from all of her live game action. So I expect her to be better down the stretch for this Irish team. She was the most outstanding player of the ACC tournament, a tournament in which Notre Dame won. And this is what Hidalgo is known for, leading the nation in steals. And maybe that'll get her going, because she gets as fired up making plays like that than she does hitting a shot. Yes, she does. She absolutely does. One of the most competitive players in terms of being able to see that, right? Uh, and her energy, her emotion. So fast. The true freshman from New Jersey. De good defense by Westbeld and Marshall forces another turnover by the Beavers. Maddie Westbeld playing with three personal fouls. Donovan Hunter, the point guard for Oregon State, now has three fouls. 16 turnovers for the Beavers. Citron. She's and, so smooth. And, and a great balance with yeah. Hidalgo, right? Coach Ivy has called them fire and ice, as different as can be. And she credits Citron a lot for calming Hidalgo down in moments when she can get a bit too hyped. And she can calm things down by scoring. Yeah, and doing, doing things as calmly as possible. She's aggressive. She moves well without the ball. You know she can light it up. I think Sonia Citron has to get going a little bit more offensively. Long three is well short by Von Olsen. She only has two points. Hidalgo. Goes right into the teeth of the defense. No basket, the foul before. I love this take by Sonia Citron. So the pull-up has been there, so she hesitates, right? What that does is it forces Reagan Beers to react, and then she's able to get by. So many little subtleties to Sonia Citron's game that, that, that aren't quite obvious, but that make her so effective. Hoffman just picked up her second foul for Oregon State. More subs in. Notre Dame has played just six players today. The Wolf hits the two. It's a six-nothing Irish run. They have trailed by as many as ten in this quarter. The pull-up continues to be there for the Irish. Anna DeWolf does a good job of getting by the screen, using it, getting her space, knocking it down.
Oregon State's gone almost three minutes without scoring. Marshall, good job to recover on the baseline. Another turnover, Bransford into the game. Citron has the doll go behind her. Hannah, too strong on the three. And then a foul in the backcourt on Citron. One of her rare mistakes, just her first. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 continues tonight on CBS and TBS. For more information on tournament games and networks, go to NCAA.com. We saw North Carolina go out last night, Alabama beating them. Oh my, two on Citron, back to back in the backcourt as Hannah Hidalgo has a moment with her head coach. Well, Ivy Boy, you, one of the talk about a premier point guard and she is turning even at this young age not a lot of experience as a head coach she's gonna be a great one she already is a great one you know and, and I think one of the things like you saw right there was just her communication she, she understands right now she needs to continue to, to pour into Hannah Hidalgo they're gonna need her down the stretch of this ball game she's got to be able to recover flush it but that's another great look on the interior for Reagan Beers is that Gardner with the pass man that was fantastic. Gears double-double continues to grow. 12 rebounds to go along with 16 points. All day. All day. That's yep. going to be there all day. And that's one of the sweet spots for Westbell. It, it really is, and that's the versatility of Maddie Westbell. You know, she, she, you can use her with the ball in her hands, with her back to the basket, coming off of pin downs, coming off of fade screens. Final 50 seconds of the third quarter. All pressure. Got to have hands up. Beers has it in the low block, kicks it out. Gardner ends out. Citron was able to take it away from Beers. Westbell playing with three fouls. Puts it in. Maddie Westbell coming through for the Irish who have tied this game after being down by 10. No shot clock for the Beavers. TVO guarded by Citron. Beers with the screen, and it worked perfectly for Gardner, who has turned herself into an elite three-point shooter. Well, Oregon State gets the bucket to take a three-point lead after three. When we come back, Holly Rowe will have an interview with Miel Ivey, her team back in this game. With great execution at the end of the quarter by Gardner. Welcome back to Albany where Notre Dame trails by three, but Maddie Westfeld and Sonja Citron doing their part, combining for 34 points so far for the Irish in the Sweet 16 matchup. Holly Rowe caught up with their head coach, Neil Ivey. Well, Coach Ivy, we often talk about your big three. Let's start with Sonia Citron and Maddie Westbell. How fantastic have they been for you so far? So solid, so locked in. You can tell they're leaders. You know, Maddie's a senior. She's been here before. Um, they're leading us with just their passion and energy. Hannah Hidalgo, she's got to get going. I saw you just have kind of a, a precious moment with her on the sideline. What was the message you were delivering in that moment? Telling her to let it go, next play. I mean, I know she's frustrated, and I tell her, let it go, let it go, next play. You got, you know, at that time, 12 more minutes. You know, 12 more minutes, the opportunity to get to the lead eight. Let it go, keep playing. Thank you, Coach. Well, Neil Ivy, so well known to Notre Dame fans. She was a national champion in 2001. And you see the record since she took over for the legendary Muffet McGraw, winning 28 games this year. Three straight NCAA tournament appearances, got her regular season ACC championship for the first time last year, won the tournament this year, and doing it really, Steph White, with just really six reliable players that she uses. And, and you think about the timing of all of these injuries, and, and, and every time they've happened, this is a team that's had to reinvent themselves. Olivia Miles, end of last season. You think maybe she's going to come back? She doesn't. Kassan Prosper, um, you know, Sonia Citron in the non-conference. Kassan Prosper in the non-conference. Maddie uh, Westbell has, has been the constant for Niel Ivey. She started every game of her career for Niel. She said, I've leaned on Maddie for leadership. And this is a group that continues to believe and just does what's necessary 
to put themselves in position to win ball games. That ball is going to go Oregon State way, even though no team disagrees vehemently. And the Beavers getting ready to inbound with Neal Ivy, and she talked about it. it was like several different seasons this year. Yeah. Let's see that that Ooh. ball was off. Oregon State and the yes, fans are hearing the reaction because they just showed it on the big screen here. That was a missed call. So a break for Oregon State. And Hannah Hidalgo is starting this quarter on the bench. Great job, KK Bransford, with some defense in the backcourt. That was a backcourt violation. They didn't get over in 10 seconds. Three in the three court pressure. A good job of, of creating a turnover. Getting another opportunity. It's a possession ball game. 18 turnover for the Beavers. Let's see how Hidalgo responds here in the third quarter. West Bell to Citron. Poetry in motion. This is an action that Notre Dame worked on yesterday in practice. The timing of when to bring out that action is perfect for Neil Ivy. That's the lead to one. Winner gets the winner of South Carolina and Indiana. They will play. After this game, they're going to get Bransford for the region. Continue to find ways to create some movement, create some off-ball screening action, great little split in the corner. Sonia Sitton reads the curl. Well, she and Maddie Westbound have such great synergy. Sitton with 19 points. Reagan Beers back in the game, so Natalie Marshall comes back in for the Irish. Oh, Taken great. away. Oh, my goodness, Maddie Westfield. She's everywhere. Citron for three. The back rim. The uh, Westfield, it seems like there's two or three Maddie Westfields out there right about now. I mean, what a read. <laughs> read. I mean, this is just picture. Perfect. Look at Hannah Hidalgo recover to put pressure on the ball. Maddie Westfeld read it perfectly. The timing, the Irish not able to get a bucket on the end, but that was excellent defense. Oregon State continuing to struggle with their turnovers in this game. 19, now 20 Oregon State turnovers have been converted into 20 Notre Dame points so far. Well, fortunately, in the second half, for the Beavers, they've been a lot of dead ball turnovers, so it allows them to set their defense. And keeps Hidalgo from hitting them in the open court. Beers came over to help, so Hidalgo wisely backed it back. Directing traffic, Hidalgo missed all five of her shots and didn't score in the third quarter. They left Marshall open, <laughs> daring her to score. How about that, Nat Marshall, big time shot. They're gonna continue to dare her to score, but Nat Marshall making some plays on D, knocking down a big bucket for the Irish. First lead since late in the second quarter for the Irish. Nice look and Barry. Gardner. I, I love this chess match because Oregon State utilizing Tamiya Gardner in the same way Notre Dame utilizing Maddie Westfeld. That's the advantage of having players with that much versatility. It's our ninth lead change of the game. Beers with another board. Thirteenth rebound of the game for Beers to go along with her 16 points. Hunter, you see? She's being dogged by a dog though. And then Hannah knocked it out at the last possible second. The ball went off Hunter's leg. It's Notre Dame basketball. Oregon State really wants to milk this clock, right? Make it a half court game, but Hannah Hidalgo, the pressure. There was no initiating pass in offense and then a terrific play to get the deflection. 21st turnover for the Beavers. A whistle and an offensive foul on the Irish. Second personal on Italian Marshall is Coach Ivy sporting a Prada jacket today. 
You're not surprised. That's a stylish right? protestation of that call. You know that Notre Dame oh, staff has it. been stylish for uh, decades. Yes. Decades. Uh, Hannah. Hunter just got it over in the nick of time. And Hansford, who could be lethal from three with the miss. Hidalgo got a little screen from Marshall, still cold from the floor, and then Beers took it out of Citron's hand. Hidalgo has missed 12 of her 14 shots today. Beers called for the moving screen. And you got to give the guards on him, Sonia Citron on the other end as well for Oregon State. Great job of staying connected to the ball handler to get multiple illegal screen calls. Just the second foul on Beers. scored a field goal since the first quarter. The Wolf, nope, nobody but Beavers underneath. Gardner, who hit a three right before the half expired and brought it up. Got a miss on this backside. Tamia calling for it. Citron just slipped over. Still think he got it. And then Citron put her foot out, kick save and a beauty to keep it from going into Gardner, who might have had a, an uncontested two for the fourth year every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN for more information go to NCAA.com your home for all 90 NCAA championships culminating championship Sunday in Cleveland beautiful Gardner off the inbounds gets the lead back up to three As Gardner has hit 20 points he averages 11 and a half per game Defender is one of the reasons why Hidalgo has been kept in check. Shock winding down for Westbelt. Missed everything. Citron tried to save it, but it's Oregon State ball. Execution out of bounds by Oregon State. A great job right here. Freeze it right there. Look, it clears out the entire backside. Hannah Hidalgo has no idea someone's coming. Perfect execution by Oregon State. And Tamia Gardner's been outstanding. Pass a little bit too strong, trying to get into Beers. There you see the 23 turnovers. Oregon State averaging just over 13 on the season for head coach Scott Ruick. What a season it has been. Did not make the tournament last year. Four Pac-12 games. Citron. So crafty uses both hands and then finishes and draws the foul. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Spot in the Elite Eight is on the line here between Notre Dame and Oregon State. And the players have been showing it all game long. A nip and tuck affair between these two clubs. Hannah Hidalgo struggling from the floor, but still staying very much engaged as we take a look at today's star stories brought to you by Honda Reagan Beers with another double-double, her 16th of the season. Boy, it's on Citron. Just cool, calm, and really good. Well, I think Andrea Carter called for her to have 20-plus field goal attempts in the studio at halftime, and she's at 19 right now. She's been outstanding, but down the stretch, these last five minutes, the Irish need Hannah Hidalgo to find her way. Holly Rowe was listening in to the last Irish huddle. Holly. Well, Neal Ivy drew up a lot of great offensive plays, gave her team the game plan. The most important thing she kept saying over and over was the importance of boxing out. Notre Dame is getting crushed on the boards right now. It is 36 to 18 rebounds for Oregon State. It is going to come down to possessions and who gets these opportunities. That was her biggest message. Citron, after the three-point play, steals it, stays with it. Ball out of bounds to the Irish. 
Oh, is Citron putting on a show here in the last couple of minutes? Well, this is just great defense. That's a long pass, and so Citron reads it perfectly. The Irish not able to convert, but save the possession. And Hidalgo trying to inbound now. Hannah in the second half, 0 for 6 from the floor, also does not have an assist. And we saw some of her teammates during the last timeout coming over, talking to her. As Coach Ivy told Holly Rowe, just go on to the next play. Citron missed everything with that shot. Tied up under four and a half minutes left to go. The winner gets South Carolina or Indiana in a couple of days. And another 10 second violation. That's the second we've seen. Hey, and, and there's a lot of ways to be effective on the defensive end of the floor. Hannah Hidalgo is used to that being getting steals, but she's created two 10 second violations because of her ball pressure. Now the now the Irish got to got to be able to get a score off of this. Five turnovers in the last three and a half minutes for Oregon State. Notre Dame trying to build on the points off turnovers, and they do. Anna DeWolf hits the shot. Head coach Neil Ivy pointing right at her after she got it. Well, they ran that action on the other side of the floor, and DeWolf got a good look, and this time terrific read. Irish on top by two with four minutes to go. Inside, Beers caught it in a good spot, got fouled by Westbell. That will be the fourth on Maddie. I mean, again, the fake of, of the handoff right there. Way to sell it by Anna DeWolf. And Neil Ivey has that moment. Again, we talk about her communication and connection with these players, and it's on full display. DeWolf, the grad transfer from Fordham, playing her first and only year at Notre Dame. Sweet 16 round of the NCAA Women's Championship continues tonight on ESPN out in Portland at 7.30 Eastern, NC State, Stanford, followed by Gonzaga and Texas. All games also on the ESPN app. Beers, who is not a good free throw shooter, just 64% on the season. Missed them both. Talk about turnovers. Notre Dame has only turned the ball over three times all game. Remarkable. Clinging to a two-point lead, Citron finding space. And then Marshall crashes in to Gardner. She's trying to catch her breath a little bit. Third foul now on Marshall. And some pressure from the Irish. Now, Ivy says we'll be tired after the season is over. They're going to go full bore, playing with six players. Yeah, nobody's got time for that right now. Right. You're in the Sweet 16, playing for a chance at the Elite Eight. Hannah knocked it away. Marshall saved it in. The Wolf, Hidalgo, three, just a touch too strong. Three minutes left. Dan Oldhoffen, just two points herself today, has missed five out of six shots. Hunter, huge three for the freshman. That is a big time shot, but a big time play by Van Oldhoffen. Read it perfectly, knew the help was coming, made the right play. Citron, not quite enough. Called for steps as she tried to keep it in bounds. I mean, Talia von, von Olhoffen right here, she knows that all eyes are on Reagan Beers on the roll. And what a pass on time, on target. Donovan Hunter knocks down a huge three. Von Olhoffen, we mentioned, struggling from the floor, but she has nine assists on the game. Oregon State up one with the ball. Well, Scott Ruick called her one of the most talented players that he has ever coached. And he's coached a lot of talented players. Certainly has inside the beers. Marshall with the defense. It goes right out to Hansford. And sure, her turn now to hit from distance. Scott Ruick said Lily Hansford is the unsung hero. She knocks down a big time three every time she every time we need it. And she certainly did right there. Westbelt. 
Gets her own miss, takes it right back up, and got fouled. So a couple of big threes here for the Beavers. Lily Hansford shoots it 45% from the three-point line, and that is a big three off of an offensive rebound, and you know everybody on that pinch loves it. Goes back to, to Holly's point. And the LIV was talking to the team in the huddle about we have to come up with defensive boards. Oregon State is shooting at 61% from the floor, so when they miss, Notre Dame's got to find a way to come up with it. And they are getting massacred on the boards right now. Minus 17 for Notre Dame. The West Belt hits both free throws. To get it back to a two-point convert, uh, two-point advantage. Pardon me. And there's the dog again in the back court. Ooh, at that time, TBO just put her head down to get over. Inside a minute and a half. Shot clock into single digits. And Olhoffen. Another stellar defensive play this time by Citron, but then Hunter took it away from Hidalgo, forcing Citron to foul. Citron just picked up her third foul, but another big play by the freshman Hunter, forcing the turnover. The Wolf comes back in for Bransford, more of an offensive threat. This is an Oregon State team that's been in a number of tight games. A year ago, they didn't win a lot of those tight games. This year, they've been able to come away with victories. Execution on both ends of the floor, putting themselves in position to win these ball games. And Olhoffen, who's a very good free throw shooter at 88% on the season, hits them both. Notre Dame. Down by four. One minute left. Hidalgo forces the contact, and finally, Hannah Hidalgo gets her first field goal since the first quarter. You gotta expect Reagan Beers to get a touch on the interior. And if you're Notre Dame, you wanna play good defense, and you gotta finish the play. Here sets the screen. Gardner. In the beers, perfectly executed. They took a lot of time off the clock, and beers finished to get it back to a two possession game. This is just. Typical Scott Ruick teams, right? Execution down to the mere second. Work the clock, work the clock, work the clock, right? And then you find that small window of opportunity and you deliver. Both Reagan Beers and Tamia Gardner have double doubles this afternoon for Oregon State. The all important reset here. Notre Dame with the basketball, but just one timeout left. Oregon State does have a foul to give and the possession arrow in favor of the Beavers. Well, it's a two-possession ball game, so you've got to get a quick score if you're Notre Dame. And, and, and what that looks like, whether it's off-ball action, Neil, Neil Ivey has so many different actions, you know, in, in her toolkit to be able to go to. Uh, certainly understanding that Oregon State has a foul to give, so if, if somebody's putting their head down, if you want a foul, you want a foul on the dribble down, right? Not allow them to gather and go up. But for the Irish, they've just got a quick score and turn around and foul. South Carolina and Indiana will be coming up half hour after this game is over. They will get the winner of this game on Monday? It's today, Friday? Today's Friday. Thank you. That will be Sunday then. <laughs> Notre Dame led by two. It's been a 10 to four run since for the Beavers. Let's see what Miel Ivey has drawn up. Hidalgo inbounds. 
Rip and go right here. Hidalgo back to Citron. Blocked by Von Olhofen. TVO with the block. And Notre Dame fouls. We call this a little two side action. Him and Hidalgo going to the rim and a little pin in. And a terrific defensive play by Talia Von Olhofen. And this is a player. That Scott Ruick says, and look at that just perfectly. He says, we can put her on anybody in the country. She checked Juju Watkins, held her to 18% from the floor. She made a huge defensive play right there on Tonya Citron. And now she can all but put this game away at the free throw line. Another timeout, the final one for Niel Ivey, who has gotten her team to the Elite Eight for the first time since she took over for Muffet McGraw. What a great response for Oregon State after Notre Dame came back to take the lead late here in the fourth quarter. Got another game coming your way. Looking forward to seeing Mackenzie Holmes, who is in her final year of college eligibility as Indiana, the tall task of taking on South Carolina coming up. What a career McKenzie has had. Sonia Citron with 22 today. Reagan Beers, though, another double-double. It's -double. Oregon State one year after they won only 13 games total. 17 seconds away from an Elite Eight. You gotta go. Westbelt for three, rebound for Gardner, fouled immediately by Citron. And with 10 seconds left, Reagan Beers looks over in the backcourt towards her family with a big smile on her face. There are a lot of beers here today. <laughs> there certainly are. And you know, Scott Ruick talked about this team. Half of this team is new. Everyone came here to do this. He got a lot of text messages from people back home and said, this is back where you belong. Right? This is a team who had the sting of not being in the tournament last year, who rededicated themselves, recommitted the, themselves to being in this position. He said he thought it would be very special. He said every single exit interview last year was positive. Everybody came back, got into the gym, no one transferred, and here they are. They were picked to finish 10th yes. in their league. Hidalgo with another basket. But it's, it induces a timeout by Scott Ruick. Trying to get his team back into the Elite Eight. Time now for our Capital One rewarding performance. And Tamia Gardner has been terrific. She sure has, and they've moved her all around the floor. She has knocked down big shot after big shot on the perimeter, on the block. That shot right there was a huge answer to a run by the Irish. 21 points, 9 of 15 from the floor, including Two of five from the three-point line with 11 boards. And remember, she is just a sophomore along with Beers. And Gardner today is one point off her career high that she set against USC earlier this season. And the Oregon State Beavers, one year removed from 13 wins total, not only back in the dance, but they're dancing all the way to the Elite Eight. They sure are. I mean, what an outstanding effort by the Oregon State Beavers. They do what they do best on the defensive end of the floor, play team basketball, share the basketball on the offensive end. And Scott Ruick told us, this team learned it's not about talent, it's about mentality. And they have come in with a mentality that they refuse to lose. And now they're walking themselves into the Elite Eight. Both Gardner and Beards with double-doubles. Neil Ivey, a brilliant season. Her team finishes 28 and seven, just six players using them down the stretch. Their 10-game winning streak comes to a halt. 
A lot of basketball left for Hannah Hidalgo as Notre Dame exits, losing to Oregon State by the final of 70 to 65.